I ever feel full? Um, that's an interesting question. I guess it depends on how you would want to define the word full. Nick has been a friend of mine for a long time. Um, we both went to the same high school. I've never met anyone that can eat as much as Nick in one sitting. A typical meal with Nick involves him eating a lot. Um, he'll grab multiple plates while I'm sitting there with two plates. He'll go get one more plate, another plate, another plate. And he always comments on the fact that he can never be satisfied by the amount of food that he eats at the dining hall because he always feels self-conscious about eating too much. Um, I'll eat around anywhere between maybe seven to nine plates, depending on how much I put on each plate. Currently, I'm eating one meal a day. I know a lot of people advocate the six or seven meals a day policy, which I've also tried, and I tried extensively, actually, for a long period of time. And what I find is that eating these small meals leaves me more unsatisfied. So sometimes I don't approve of his um, choices, especially his one meal thing. I personally don't think eating one meal a day is, is healthy for a human being, because they're supposed to eat three meals a day. Generally, as far as like, dietary meals per day constraints go, I usually try to limit myself to what I call an eight-hour feeding period. So I'll eat for any quantity of meals usually for in an eight-hour period, and then not eat anything for the other 16. My name is Justin Heaton, and I'm the campus dietitian at Northwestern University. I have heard about the eight-hour feeding period. Some people want to get all their calories in in a certain amount of time. I mean, that can be beneficial for some people, but I mean, going so long without eating can also not be as beneficial. I mean, your body can go into kind of a starvation mode, um, so after a while you're not as hungry, but I mean, that doesn't mean you should not be eating. Studies have shown if you only eat one meal per day, your insulin levels spike and then they kind of crash. So two summers ago, um, I weighed in at around 250 pounds and around 40% body fat, which was really unhealthy. So I decided that I was just gonna spend the summer to try to get in shape, and that's kind of what started all of it. Uh, everything changed, yeah, in that summer between uh, freshman and sophomore year. He started eating well, started working out more, um, started devoting more time to studying. I work out around two hours a day. My bench press right now is, I usually, for a typical routine, I do six reps of around 230 pounds. Squatting, I generally squat around 250, that's also six reps. Um, deadlifting, I usually six rep around 395. And then pull-ups, I usually do weighted pull-ups with an additional around 80 pounds. So when I first started, I didn't really know anything about nutrition or exercising or really anything in that realm whatsoever. And I was eating, you know, at most one packet of ramen every two days or eating one Subway sub for a week. And it was just minimal calories, maximal exercise, and the pounds were just flying off. But now, looking back, I realized that was really unhealthy, albeit a really efficient way to lose weight. Small changes are probably more beneficial for the long run. I mean, somebody can lose 60 pounds in a matter of like a month or two on some crazy diet. But at the same time, are they gonna sustain that over time? Probably not. And um, then even with his diet, like, I mean, there are some days where he all of a sudden eats a lot of calories. Every summer I usually have one meal um, where I just kind of let myself eat whatever I want as sort of like a reward. Last year for one of my friend's birthdays, we went to an all-you-can-eat sushi buffet. I ended up eating 12 boats of sushi. It got kind of ridiculous because the restaurant would only let you order one boat at a time. So by the end of our time there, we had all six people ordering boats for me. So I believe that there's no magic diet or solution, which I think a lot of people are looking for. So what I find is that the best diet is one that you can live comfortably with. He's definitely a unique person. I've never met anyone that has the kind of dedication and desire to work out as him. The most important thing about maintaining a healthy lifestyle and getting in shape is that if you really want to succeed, it has to be because you want it for yourself, not because you're getting attention or because you want other people to look at you a certain way or because you want to be popular. Because I think if you're motivated by other people, you'll ultimately fail because that's not strong enough motivation for all the hard work it takes to stay in shape and to be fit. So your motivation really has to come from your inner determination and willpower.